Welcome back to Join News Prime to the rest of our stories. All is set for Nigeria's general elections and is set to take place Saturday. 18 candidates are running for the top job of president of the country, but only three are tipped to stand a realistic chance of emerging victorious. There are the governing all progressive Congress candidates Bola Chinobu, People's Democratic Party's Atiku Abubakar, and Labour Party candidate Peter Obi. The Independent National Elections Commission says a total of 87 million permanent voter cards have been collected across the country. INEC Chairperson Professor Muhammadu Yakubu says all is set for the polls. The security agencies meanwhile say they will ensure peace during the exercise. Our team in Kumase has been speaking to President of the Nigerian Traders and Union Association, Kizito Obiora, who says though they live in Ghana, they are interested in the outcome of Saturday's elections. But as I'm talking to you, a lot of us have traveled. Many of us have traveled to Nigeria. Though I didn't travel because of one thing or another. If not, I suppose to be in Nigeria by now. In fact, I plan to go very seriously. I believe that over, over, over 30, 40 to 50 percent of Nigerians here in Ghana have their permanent voters card. And I know that. I'm very sure that at least 20 or 30 percent have traveled. Oh, it's not going to affect us in any way because this is something everybody knows. Because I know that Nigerian border have closed at the, uh, since uh, yesterday night uh, till after the election. As a business, we're supposed to plan your business. This is not, a, this is not an emergency. It's not just like uh, last time President just all of a sudden closed the border. Uh, that one is a different thing. But this one, everybody knows that the, the border must close to some so date. We all know what we are suffering in Nigeria now. Nigeria is not easy. We all know that for past eight years, even the government himself agreed that the economy is the Nigeria. Uh, uh, Nigeria is in a very serious problem. The party, the, the leading party in Nigeria, APC, also agreed. Even their presidential candidate, almost all his campaign, whenever he visits, he is telling the whole Nigerian, the whole world, that this government has failed. That is coming to correct it. I don't know how it's going to correct it. Being a leader, leader of the party for eight million years. Let's cross over to Nigeria and speak with editor and anchor at the New Central TV, Kemini Amano, who joins us live via Zoom. Kemini, grateful that you joined us. A day to the elections, what is the mood like in Nigeria? People are going about their duties as they should. Um, people are still queued at the ATMs to try and get some cash, you know, last minute cash to try and um, deal with your needs uh, tomorrow. Um, we also know that INEC has started setting up in some areas. In fact, some of our reporters at News Central uh, have reported that uh, INEC even got concessions. INEC in Kano specifically got concessions for fuel, uh, given the fuel shortage in the country at the moment. And so it would seem that things are, are, are going great towards the election. We also know that land borders are closed at the moment. The immigration service said it was doing that as part of efforts uh, to secure the country and secure the election process. So, so far, so good. News of shortage of currency and fuel in that country and the ailing economy in general. Will that influence the elections in any way? Absolutely. Top of mind uh, issues for Nigerians as they go to vote tomorrow from 8.30 in the morning are uh, corruption, um, security, and then uh, the economy. And these two issues you have mentioned, the cash crunch and the uh, fuel shortage, are indicators of how bad the government in, in power now has done. And so for, for people who are... Um, going out to vote, the 87.2 million people who step out tomorrow, that could be a motivation for the reason they go out. It could also be, you know, the reason that they don't go out because then they are fed up with the status quo. Mm. Let's look at turn up for voting on election day, which is tomorrow. Will, will the shortage of fuel, for instance, have any effect on this? It could and it could not. And, and let me explain that. In the 20, 2019 elections, Things were not this bad. Um, the voter roll was 84 million people, but guess what? Only 34% of uh, the voters showed up. 
Now things are this bad. People don't have the cash to get into the keke. They don't have it to get into the BRT. They don't have it to get into the uh, yellow buses who rely on cash. And so then if you look at that from that angle, then you'd say that perhaps people will not be turning out uh, to vote just as they did in, in the 2019 election. But if you turn it over and, and look at how people are fed up with the status quo, look at how people are fed up with the fact that this, particularly the fuel shortage, happens every year and they want change, then we'll have people turning out. And, and whether or not people turn out could, depend, could also de determine who could come up tops. Mm. Is, has the issue of currency been resolved as, I mean, we head towards elections tomorrow? Not at all. Not at all. People are still queuing. Um, we know that the president had said that uh, the 200 naira, the old 200 naira should now be accepted. But despite that ruling, it, it would seem that the ruling came a little too late. And so, um, oh, what am I even calling the ruling? It was an order from the president to the central bank. It would seem that it came, it came out too late and it didn't have any impact at all. There's still no cash. I don't have cash. I know a lot of my colleagues at New Central don't have cash either. When you're on the streets, people are still huge there looking for cash. So the cash issue, which they say should curb uh, vote trading, is, is far from over. Mm. How, how bad is this looking for the uh, incumbent or the ruling party? I wish that I could give you a direct answer to that, but I can't. Because again, the Nigerian voter is very unpredictable. Uh, we've seen it in past elections. The PDP has been in power. Uh, the PDP was in power from 1999 until 2015. Why did they lose their hold on the Nigerian voter? It's because the Nigerian voter decided that we want change. Um, given the record of, or perceived record of the APC at the moment, it would, if, if you were to go by that, then you'd say perhaps they would, the Nigerian voter would be looking for change again. But we really don't know anything for sure. And when you compare um, what the polls are telling us, like you said, uh, and w which is the case, we have a third contender. And if you extend it, perhaps a fourth contender. The third contender being uh, the Labour Party's Peter Obi. And then the fourth contender being Rabiu Kwankoso of the New Nigeria People's Party. If you, if you look at the fact that uh, these people have come in the fray, it would give you an idea that perhaps it's time for change and, and the change will not be swapping the seats for the PDP and the APC. Mm. At the mm. same time, you'd also think about the fact that there are voters who have the behavior of sticking to what they know. And the PDP is no, is no mean party. The APC is no mean party. They have very strong holes in the geopolitical zones of, 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 of uh, Nigeria. Will Peter Obi be able to eat into those? Mm. All but one of the polls says, yes, Peter Obi could lead the elections. He may not be able to meet all the requirements, and the elections could go into a runoff. And, and, and again, that is also hinge on whether or not people are going to turn out to vote for Peter Obi. Mm. And, and, and then there are those who think that the APC will retain its seat with Bola mm. but, but But like talking about Peter Obi, he presents a young, vibrant spirit and he's already receiving a lot of social media traction. I mean, can this upset the PDP and the APC? It could and it if, Listen, uh, the, the Nigerian voter is extremely unpredictable. And for so many of the experts and analysts that I've spoken to um, on my show, it would seem that we are also struggling to put a finger on it. And, and like I mentioned before, you know, these polls would have predicted this is the time for the APC to retain or this is the time for the PDP to return to office. But it would seem that even the polls are having difficulty picking uh, a clear winner, a decisive winner for the 2023 elections. And, and it all boils down to the fact that um, at, at 61 years old, Peter Obi is able to resonate with the young people. He's telling the young people enough of the corruption, enough of our leaders living the life that we wish we all could live, enough of the oil theft, enough, enough of the, uh, the, the insecurity in the country. And, and that has resonated a lot with the young people who are on social media. And, and, and that's why you talk about that 
you know, they are on social media and they're supporting, but it's, all, it's not just on, on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Obi has, I think, has had a great campaign uh, show the last few months, and we can only hope that these young people would actually show up and vote. Because it, it, it would seem that if, if he cannot make, um, if he cannot get the highest number of votes, and he also does not get 25% out of, 25% uh, of the highest votes in 24, out of the 36 states, he will have a problem being a decisive winner, which mm. means that the election could go into a runoff. Mm. And it wouldn't be an easy thing to do. Mm. Kemini Nyamani Amano, he's his editor and anchor at the News Central TV. Thank you very much for bringing us that update. Let's